This is the Inkbird IAM T1 air quality monitor. It monitors carbon dioxide concentration, temperature, relative humidity, and air pressure. And it's perhaps one of the most beautiful sensors I've ever seen. Just look at the display. Now, originally, I wasn't intending on featuring this device, and I'll tell you why later on in the episode. But once I saw it in person and saw how good it looks with an e-ink display, it sparked an interesting debate and conversation here at the Country Club about how most smart home sensors are a little boring. Admittedly, I'd never heard of Inkbird before. This was the first time that I'd ever come across them. But since then, I've learned that they do quite an eclectic mix of sensors and controllers, and I'm really not fooling around here. They do products like temperature sensors, but then also things like smart connected meat thermometers and even irrigation system smart controllers. But moving back to this perplexing yet beautiful product, I've got to say it's the nicest looking air quality sensor that I've ever seen. It's got a touch of class that I haven't seen on this type of product before. This subtle fabric accent along the bottom, which makes me seem a little mad focusing on, but I think it's exactly what's been missing from my smart home tech. I'm kind of sick of everything, just being white blobs of uncharacteristic plastic shapes. This accent actually gives it a bit of character and it blends in with things like the fabric on my smart speakers and ultimately makes it more homely. Agree or disagree about the accented material design? What you won't be able to disagree with, though, is the fantastic e-ink display. I've been a huge fan of e-ink displays for a long, long, long time, and in my opinion, it's a technology that's criminally underused. If I had it my way, about half the devices I own would have e-ink displays. I've always romanticized about a secondary display on phones, for example. If my phone is lying flat, I can get notifications, or on folding devices. I personally think devices like the Pixel Fold or Samsung Fold 5 with their massive screens on the front is a bit overkill. I get people use them, but if they offered a model at half the cost in exchange for a small e-ink notification display on the front, I can bet my left Christmas bauble that people would snap it up. And you may even find there'd be a higher adoption of folding phones because of it. Alas, it's not to be, at least for now. But Phone technology isn't the only area where I think displays like e-ink could excel. And the Inkbird IAMT1, a bit of a mouthful of a name, proves that point. For smart home sensors, this type of technology just makes complete sense. And that's because e-ink displays come with a few benefits that make them ideally suited for smart home use. Firstly, I just love how crisp and clear it is in broad daylight. It stands out like, well, paper, funnily enough. It lacks a backlight, but then again, most smart home sensors with visible information don't have a backlight anyway. So it's not so much of an issue, you're not missing out on anything here. But with an e-ink display, the angle of viewing is far, far, far better than anything else. Even at a nearly 90 degree angle, the display is pretty clear to read. Compare this to something like the SwitchBot temperature and humidity sensor, which is a regular LCD display, and you can quite clearly see the difference in the readability, especially at extreme angles where the SwitchBot becomes pretty much unreadable but the e-ink display of the Inkbird sensor is still pretty clear. Now, another big benefit of using e-ink displays with smart home devices is that they're much more power efficient, meaning much greater battery life when compared to other devices with other forms of display. If you don't know, e-ink displays actually consume energy only when they change information on the display. If there's no change, then there is no battery being consumed or very, very minimal. The moment it refreshes and changes the details on the screen, that's when the majority of the power consumption actually occurs. Now, with this in mind, Inkbird say that this sensor has the ability to last four years on the two AA batteries that comes with the device, which let's face it, I'm not gonna be able to prove or disprove until summer 2027, at which point the world's probably ended by then already. Hmm. Regardless, the long battery life is predominantly because of the use of the e-ink display. 
but also because of the thing that nearly made me not feature this, but stay seated, I'll get onto that very, very shortly. With all of these benefits, I cannot fathom why companies don't use e-ink displays more often, like the Inkbird sensor does, because they are so much better in these scenarios. E-ink does have a few minor downsides, like a lower refresh rate and a reduced color palette, but for sensors, this type of display is perfect because you're not playing Call of Duty on the display. You just don't need the display refreshing 30 times a second. In fact, interestingly, within the app, you can actually change how often the screen refreshes, which could in impact how long the battery would last for. Perhaps on its fastest refresh rate of one minute intervals, it may run out sooner, but there's the option to increase the refresh rate to 10 minutes. Now, this doesn't mean that the device isn't reading the measurements. It just means that it won't display the current data on the display until a 10 minute interval has actually passed. The other aspects of the app are really simplistic with both current and historic data presented in a really easy to read and colorful format, along with the ability to set parameters for when alarms go off when certain measurements meet your set criteria, such as exceeding a high temperature. Now, normally at this point, I'd be talking about how you can use this particular function to trigger automations, however, this is the reason why I wasn't intending originally on featuring it. Because it has no connectivity to the wider smart home. It can only connect to your device by Bluetooth. And the data is then synced directly to your phone. So unfortunately, it's unlikely you'll be able to make use of this as an automation device. However, with that said, after spending some time with it, simply for its appearance and excellent looking display, I've come to realize that this lack of wider smart home connectivity is actually one of its strengths and will appeal to certain people. And no, I haven't lost my marbles, or at least all of them. Hear me out for just a second. The first massive benefit is the battery life. I mentioned earlier that the e-ink display is integral to the long battery life, but also I think it's because it doesn't have always connected use. This too helps with battery life as it only connects when you purposefully connect your phone to download the information to the app through Bluetooth. You can set it to stay connected to your phone through the Bluetooth switch at the back, which there's also a switch, by the way, here to change between Celsius or Fahrenheit. But I think the idea with this is that you can run this for many, many, many years without needing to connect, but bear in mind that the device actually only stores a rolling 30 days of information. So any data recorded over 30 days will be lost if you don't sync your device to your phone within that time frame. But another benefit here is the privacy element. In today's world, everything is connected and smart. I've even got a pair of shoes that connect to my phone, but that's for another episode. Moving back to this, although I myself specifically look for always connected devices, I know plenty of people, some of them friends, who don't want that. They want some smart functionality, but don't want to connect to the internet of things to be always on and always watching. So from a privacy standpoint, this offers a lot of data which smart home devices give you just without the need to connect it to the wider network. And although that's not necessarily my cup of tea, I do respect it. And the last benefit of it being untethered is that it is portable. It doesn't rely on having to be connected to a particular network or particular hub. It works simply through Bluetooth 5.0, which means you can pop it in your bag and take it wherever you go for portable air quality monitoring. Maybe that's the office, maybe that's a holiday cottage or hotel or even caravan or tent. It's an ideal little travel companion that's as happy out as it is at home. But now let's talk about the price because this surprised me quite a lot. It's launching at $170 without discounts, which I initially thought was quite a considerable amount for a sensor that doesn't connect to the wider smart home. And you can also get environment sensors without displays for a similar price or less. However, to cut it a little bit of slack, I did some digging into other CO2 environment sensors with a similar quality e-ink display, and I was even more surprised to find that this is actually competitively priced. All the other sensors with CO2 monitoring and e-ink displays are above 
And that's ones with standardized no form of wireless connectivity. If you want wireless connectivity, they run 250 upwards. Now I speak in terms of US dollars because at the moment it's launched in the US for the time being anyway, but it's launching in the UK on Amazon as well in the near future. And I will be super interested to see how they price it at that point. Now, I really, really like this sensor, but make no mistake, I'm absolutely gutted that it doesn't have wider smart home connectivity, that's for sure. And it is a bit more pricey than I thought it would be, all things considering, but it's also hard to deny that it's perhaps the best looking CO2 monitor that I've ever used. And although I want it to, the fact that it doesn't have always connected smart home connectivity actually gives it strengths over products that do. Strengths that will absolutely appeal to the right people. And let me tell you now, if Inkbird brought out one that could pair up directly to my smart home network, I'll be buying several straight away. If nothing but to add a bunch of e-ink displays around the country club. What do you think? Do you think more smart home devices should have e-ink displays or not? Do you like e-ink displays? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to check out the Inkbird IAM T1, I'll drop a link in the description below. But Inkbird are definitely one to watch for in the coming months, that's for sure. But I'll see you guys back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.